it's time to get to work. All right, so differential. In spite of the fact that we work from home and actually have about half a dozen Jeeps that we drive on a regular basis, we still managed to rack up over 15,000 miles on our brand new Jeep JL Wrangler Rubicon Unlimited. And for us, that means it's time to do some maintenance. Now among these things, I like to service the front and rear differentials and this is always a good idea to do anyway if you've been spending any time in some deep water. Fortunately, this is a super easy job to do and all you really need is a 3 8 inch drive ratchet just like you see right here. Now there really is no need to rack up your Jeep in order to service your differentials, but for the purpose of filming, it's a lot easier, so that's why we have it on the rack. Grab ourselves an old catch pan, like this. Slide it underneath the differential. So this is what makes this job so easy. Back in the day, you would have had to remove all the bolts on a differential cover, pull the cover, clean all the gasket material, and let the whole thing drain before you reassembled the whole thing and filled it up again. Fortunately, Jeep wised up with a JK, and they started adding a drain port, at least on the rear you can see right here on the side of the differential, and all you need to do is pull this drain bolt out, let it drain out, and then we can refill it. Again, all you really need is a 3 8 inch drive ratchet, but for me, I like to have a little extra leverage to get these bolts off, so I like to use a half inch drive ratchet with a step bit on it, and that'll make it easier to remove this bolt. Now's a good time to also check the drain bolt, which is magnetic, to see if there's any bits or chunks to indicate anything that might be broken, like the teeth or anything else inside. So this goop that you see here, just, it's just metal filings. That's no big deal and totally normal. What we're looking for are chunks. It all looks clean to me. So we can go ahead and clean up this drain bolt. You can see that it just had all this metal filings caught in the goop itself of the gear oil. So we'll clean this up. Set it aside. And then using your ratchet again, we're gonna go ahead and pull the fill plug. Okay, looks clean. And grab some brake clean and a rag, or in this case, kind of an industrial paper towel. And for our purposes, I'm going to use some Royal Purple 75W90, which is a little higher than factory requires. Factory is asking for 75W85, but um, I've always had good luck with this stuff, and that's what we're going to put in the differentials today. I'm also going to grab some chemical resistant Teflon tape. Now the drain bolt and fill bolt actually had some Teflon paste on it from the factory, and since I don't have any, I'm gonna go ahead and use this tape instead. Now it is important that you use yellow Teflon tape like you see here because it is chemical and oil resistant, and that'll be necessary to make it work right. Grab all our stuff. Go ahead and clean the stuff up a little bit better. You can see right here, this whitish stuff, that was the Teflon paste that used to be on here. That's why we're gonna put some tape on. Same with this bolt, this is all the whitish stuff. This is also paste on the fill bolt. Clean that up some more. Okay, so we wanna go ahead and grab the drain bolt, and you can tell that this is it because it's got the magnet, versus the fill bolt, which is blank, like this. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna grab our Teflon tape, we're just gonna apply a couple wraps on it. And then we're gonna go ahead and reinstall it. Now we can tighten it up. You don't need to go crazy tight. If I recall, the torque spec on this is only about 25, maybe 30 foot pounds of torque, and that might even be excessive. So just kind of good hand type and not crazy tight. That should be it on that. 
So I'm going to go ahead and prep the fill bolt with some Teflon tape as well. And of course, before we reinstall it, we're going to go ahead and fill it up with some gear oil. Pull the seal. And I think I need to cut the nozzle. So from here, all you need to do is fill up your differential until the gear oil starts to ooze out of the fill port. That's when you know it's full. We're going to make some lovely sounds here in just a moment. Entertaining for the kids for sure, and a few adults. <sighs> yeah, that's a good sound. Okay, see how it's already starting to ooze out? A lot of that's because we're racked up and the axle's at a full droop. So I'll put this back on the ground. Uh, I'll, I'll cap it off, put it back on the ground, and then give it some more because once the axle's more at a uh, ride height, uh, it'll take in some more fluid. So let me go ahead and cap this for now. Yeah, you can actually, if you look right here, I don't know if the camera can see it, you can actually see the fluid levels all the way up to the top. So if we were doing this on the ground, uh, it would have taken in more fluid. So let me go ahead and cap that, at least loosely. Now if we had been doing this on the ground, you'd essentially be done. All you need to do is tighten up this bolt and you're good to go. A heck of a lot easier than it used to be back in the old days. So now we can go over to the front. Okay, just like we did in the rear, we're gonna go ahead and take our 3 8 inch dry ratchet and remove the drain bolt from the very bottom of the front axle. Ours is a little beat up as some of you might have seen in our other videos. I had repaired this once. Oops, there we go. Let that drain out. And while that thing is draining, we can go ahead and pull the fill plug as well. Again, we want to check the magnet on the drain bolt to make sure it's clean. Usually the front is cleaner because it's not actually doing any driving for the most part, except for when in four wheel drive. So you won't typically find too much on here. Even the color of the oil is very clean. You can see here that um, even though I was able to tighten the bolt up and keep it from leaking too much, um, our last trip to the Rubicon really did a number on the threads. And that's why it was so loose. On top of the fact that, look at the base, I really had to take a file and clean up all these holes just to get a tool in there to get the drive ratchet in there to um, remove this bolt. So we're gonna get rid of this one. Fortunately, I was able to talk to a good friend of mine over at FCA and they gave me the part number that I needed, which you can see here is 6840-1316-AA. And this, is a brand new drain bolt. Ta-da! Look, it even comes with some Teflon paste right on it. Okay, we'll let that drain out. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the drain bolt, or a new one anyway. Again, not crazy tight, just tight enough. And then we can go ahead and refill the differential. Just like we did in the rear, we're going to go ahead and put in some 75W90 Royal Purple. Fill it up. There it comes. So with the Jeep on the ground again, I can go ahead and try to top this thing off if it needs it. 
Yeah, it looks like you could use just a bit more. Here it comes. And there you have it. As you can see, it just took a few minutes and a ratchet to get your front and rear differentials serviced. Oh,